All right. So we're going to talk about a case of vertebral body augmentation, and in this case, specifically kyphoplasty and spine jack kyphoplasty. So the thought process is we have an acute vertebral body fracture, and we want a way to um, you know, take away the pain, and we do that by injecting some cement into the vertebral body and letting it harden so the fracture can't shift anymore. And in the case of spine jack kyphoplasty, we're putting an implant in the vertebral body to gain vertebral body height and change the kyphotic angle back to a more anatomical position, thereby hopefully decreasing the amount of adjacent level fractures that happen now. The long-term data on that is out, but people still get relief. So um, we are doing it from time to time. So it starts with proving that the vertebral body is acutely fractured because our intervention is not going to help pain in people who have chronic fracture changes. So we do that by getting an MRI. So this is a um, T2. We'll see if we can get the stir. Here we go. So the stir sequence, there's... Um, The stir weighted images um, show us, you know, they highlight the areas that have edema, which in this case correspond to the areas of acute fracture. So we have a vertebral body height loss here, and then the marrow uh, is bright, so there's edema in the marrow space. So this is an acute fracture and thereby is um, eligible for intervention that will help this patient, hopefully. We also look for things like, um, you know, posterior displacement of fracture fragments. It's not an absolute contraindication to uh, doing the procedure, but it's something we'll watch out for because um, obviously if this posterior wall is uh, not complete, there's a higher chance that some of the cement we're going to inject in here could come back into the, the spinal canal, which is certainly something we do not want. So those are our diagnostic images, and then we can go to the procedure images here. Start with this one. So this is a you know highly coned down view of the lumbar spine. This is the fractured uh, level, and I've already put one of our needles in through the pedicle, and, and I think I'm anesthetizing or I'm putting some bupivacaine on the periosteum of the lamina which we're going to go through uh, to get percutaneous access on the other side of the vertebral body. Um, it's kind of hard to see in this um, picture and I'm sure I changed the picture uh, slightly before putting in the next needle but the biggest um, part of this procedure is making sure we get access into the vertebral body without going across the spinal canal because we obviously don't want to hurt any spinal nerves or create a tract for cement into the spinal canal and create a spinal leak, all those things. So um, when we're getting access, the big landmark we're looking for is we try to find the pedicle, hopefully you can see my arrow, and then the medial wall of that pedicle. So we're going to be intervening on this level, but on this image at least, we can see the pedicle better on the level below. So when I'm gaining access, I want to make sure that my needle tip stays within the pedicle until on the lateral edge we're in the vertebral body itself. So this is a huge landmark that we're looking for. Um, so obviously this is the next step looking on the lateral. We can see this is our fractured level and we've gotten our our access needles into the posterior part of the vertebral body. And we uh, will kind of use a device to core out some bones so we can put even bigger uh, these are the implants themselves and they're kind of we want them seated all within the vertebral body itself and then this is what it looks like in a PA view so these handles will correspond to the angle at which the little spine jack prosthesis opens up just like a scissor lift or a, a scissors car jack and then this is with the prosthesis up. So you can see these foot plates will bow as they meet resistance. They're a little flexible. But the whole idea is to get 
some normal uh, ver uh, vertebral body height back um, so that this angle goes back to a more anatomic angle and hopefully less um, adjacent level fractures. So there's the AP view of that. So you can see we've definitely elevated that superior end plate where that acute fracture was. And then we instill cement. So a little cement probably leaked out into the intervertebral disc space, which isn't the end of the world. Some cement went back along the cannula track, but we know because we were careful to go through the pedicle that this is not getting into the spinal canal. Um, and then looks like we got really good infill so that all that superior um, end plate fracture is bound up by the new injected uh, bone cement and the patient had a really good outcome. So everything went well.